It's Luke at Pages Printed, and uh, I'm back with another review. Uh, so, uh, today we're going to talk about this book. Um, it's The Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor. Uh, it's been out for a fair while now, um, but I sort of kept seeing it in bookshops uh, and, and was quite intrigued by it. Uh, so I picked up a copy and took it on holiday with me. I'm mm, so I, I like a, I like a crime story, um, and I do really like a historical crime story. So obviously the Shard Lake ones are great. Uh, there's also a series about Shakespeare's brother, the name of which I can't remember, but is obviously set a bit later than the Shard Lake ones, which are very good. Um, and as a rule, you know, I tend to find them pretty gripping. There's always something quite exciting about seeing a, a killer or a criminal chased through a land that is, I guess, a bit unfamiliar to you. Um, and what's great about The Ashes of London is that it's a, a killer who is being chased through uh, London, which obviously I live in, um, but it's the London of uh, 1666, when the Great Fire of London was taking place and, and just after that. So it's a really fascinating time period, um, and one, I'll be honest, I don't know a huge amount about. Um, so I consider myself a bit of a history buff. Uh, I read history books a lot. But, as I think many people who are from Britain uh, did, uh, in education, you know, we learned about the Vikings, we learned about the Romans, um, we learned about the Victorians, and even though I studied, um, I studied history through to the end of school, but studying it there was very much, uh, you had the Victorians again, you had the Reformation, uh, you had, gosh, I think it, it, it Tudors again, actually. Um, and, and it kind of covered the same bases and then went a bit further on and you did stuff about kind of uh, 20th century politics um, but it really seemed to skip out stuff about the uh, Georgian era, the Stuart era um, and, and they're really really interesting I mean considering in the Stuart era you've got things like uh, the, the plague kind of happening um, you've also got the Great Fire of London which was this really massive and quite catastrophic thing to happen uh, you've got a civil war I mean it seems to get forgotten about the fact that for a period of time we had killed our king, we had him executed, um, and we were a republic, ruled over by Oliver Cromwell, uh, but as happens on occasion, it all went to his head and he became pretty much a king himself, uh, and everyone had lived in such misery under Cromwell that they ended up getting uh, Charles I's son, Charles II, to rule again. Um, and it's Charles II who's king when this takes place, and who was king when the Great Fire of London happened. So the basis of this uh, is, is basically um, James Marwood is um, the son of a traitor. So his dad uh, was part of the um, government side in the Civil War who had the king killed. Uh, so obviously now the king's son is in charge, he's considered a traitor. Um, James Marwood is his son. He looks after his father. His father is old and quite unwell. Um, and. Marwood does work for sort of various uh, officials in government and in the city. Um, he's watching the fire. He's watching the fire kind of uh, attack St. Paul's Cathedral, uh, which famously was, was kind of raised by fire um, in the Great Fire. The, the, the famous Christopher Wren building is, is obviously built as a result of the, of the Great Fire. Uh, and when he's there watching St. Paul's, uh, he encounters a young, what he thinks is a boy, uh, but is actually a young girl. She goes on her way. Um, later on, a body is found. And basically, it follows the two strands of Marwood and of the young girl. Uh, as you find out a lot more about her, she has a very intriguing backstory that's explored in some detail. Um, and you find that the two of them are actually quite closely linked. Um, what's nice is that whilst their paths cross fairly constantly throughout the book, uh, they actually don't really meet all that much. Um, so you're, you're really quite eager for their kind of their conversation when they do meet. Uh, and it leads to a very, very interesting climax. There's all sorts of interesting stuff built in here. Uh, some very interesting religious themes, which I knew little about and, and I'm keen to kind of look into some more. Um, the setting is kind of crazy exciting, you know, you've got this historical period uh, and you've got, you know, flames everywhere. You've got stuff burning down, you've got people kind of cast out of their homes. So it makes the whole kind of search for criminals and for a killer even more exciting because, you know, chances are maybe they've been, you know, maybe they've been killed in a fire, maybe their house has disappeared, so it's quite hard to find people and, and it really adds a, a good amount of variety and, and kind of a, a layer of unpredictability to the plot. 
which is great. Um, the author has written quite a lot of crime novels before, and he's won awards for them, and you can tell why, you know? Although here, for me, the crime didn't take centre stage, it was actually the characterisation and, and the real world building which uh, kind of won it for me um, and, and made it such a great read. Uh, I read it by the pool in Italy. Um, it, it's a, an ideal book for that and also I think it's a really good book for this time of year, you know. It's a good autumn read to kind of curl up by the fire, uh, a, a regular sized fire, not a house fire or a citywide fire. I hasten to add, um, get, you know, a big mug of tea or a, a big glass of red wine and, and really uh, settle in for the night because it's, it's a very exciting and, and, and really quite involving read. Uh, in terms of the historical aspects, actually, it's actually got me reading a lot more history uh, set of a time. So I went out and bought a book on the Civil War, which I'm enjoying very much at the moment, uh, and I plan to read up a lot more on that period uh, going forward. But yeah, Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor uh, is published by Harper and it's out now. So grab a copy, let me know what you think. Um, comment, like and subscribe on here. Um, you can go to my website, thepagesprinted.com and leave me stuff there if you want. Um, you, can, you can contact me on Twitter at LukeVictorM or on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram at LukeVMarlow. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, have a good weekend uh, and happy reading.